Hello folks and welcome to another one of my motorhome videos. In this one I'm going to be going through step by step how I installed a Chinese diesel air heater. This is the area where I'm going to be positioning the heater and the fuel tank. It's a, a seated area, obviously I've got the cushions removed and it's already got some ducting in here so hopefully I'll be able to connect the ducting from the new heater to this. I used the same under seating storage area when I upgraded my, uh, my solar power system um, so I'm going to use the opposite side this time just for the heating plus obviously it's got the ducting in it. In this area I want to fit the fuel tank um, it's a bit taller than the base of the cushions by about three or four inches so I'll be modifying the base I'll be setting it lower and fortunately in this motorhome I've got a storage area underneath uh, which will give me an area where I can run the pipe work quite easily but before I do all that let's do a quick unboxing and see all the bits and pieces that come with this Chinese diesel heater kit so I bought this 5 kilowatts air heater off of eBay from a UK supplier it turned up within a couple of days um, it came fairly well packed in a cardboard box on the top was the the 10 litre plastic diesel fuel tank and inside two smaller boxes one containing all of the main fixtures and fittings like vents and uh, muffler and jubilee clips etc in the other box which was a, a bit more better packed in polystyrene was the main heater body controls dosage pump uh, and a remote um, not forgetting the uh, pickup pipe there so all in all quite a comprehensive kit as you can see here all the parts are labeled up what you get there's everything you need here to fit the diesel heater the first job I want to do is to fit the fuel tank uh, to give me better access I'm going to take this slide out framework off the, um, the front panel and also the uh, existing ducting I can get rid of all that and then it gives me a completely open area to work on now because I've removed the old ducting it's left the hole which is quite handy because it's telling me um, I've got 40 mil of ball thickness under here it looks like there's a layer of there's two layers of ply with uh, the insulation sandwiched between this plastic piece lines up with um, another hook outside which if I drop a, a line down is exactly into the storage area so what I'm going to do is go to the, to the side of it and I know for certain then that the tank will fit inside the um, inside the storage area correctly I've got it marked out exactly where I can safely drill I'll quickly switch the inverter on for cutting the hole plug direct into the inverter. This inverter's got two sockets on it, which is quite handy. temporarily refitted the framework just to see 
where I want to position the tank which is about there and so it's about 300 mil to the top So this is the support frame that I've made, it's just going to fit up against the wall on brackets and then the tank itself is going to slide down and fits nicely in there and it's below the level of the seat. The tank itself comes with a connection kit that's a pickup pipe that needs to be screwed in the bottom of the tank and uh, three screws and three washers for mounting it. You need to first drill the three holes out here for the mounting screws and it gives you a choice of either there or there to mount the pickup pipe. You need to drill a hole that's 7.8 millimeter diameter or as close as you can for a tight fit. I've got one of these multi cutters here and there's one that is just a fraction over 7.8 so I'll use that. And now the holes for the three mounting screws. I took a piece of cord and threaded it through the field nozzle out through the new hole that I drilled and then I, I pressed it into the pickup pipe and gently pulled it through until it popped out of the hole and I was able to put the o-ring and the nut on and then nipped it up tightly. This is the fuel line that comes with the kit. It's a 4mm outside diameter and 2 mil inside diameter semi-rigid nylon pipe. One thing that's especially important to remember about the fuel line is that you only use this that's got a bore of 2 millimeters. Anything else the dosage pump will not be able to cope with and could possibly create excess air bubbles and the system won't work at all. And in order to fit it onto the tank or fit it onto the pickup pipe they also supply uh, a piece of rubber here which I'm going to need to cut into individual pieces for the various connections as I go along. Now before I fit the fuel tank to the backboard I'll pre-assemble the fuel filter onto the tank so there's a bit less work to do underneath. Just one little tip here um, it's quite cold so I've just warmed this rubber piece up a bit to make it fit better. These mounting screws are hexagon headed so you'll need a socket bit that can fit on the screwdriver to get them in so that's the fuel tank fully fitted and uh, I'm ready now to move on to the next stage now I've refitted the framework and front panel and all of the ducting. Got the layout for the new ducting and this is the position where I'm going to fit the new uh, heater burner unit. With these air heaters it's important that you fit a vent 
that can't be closed and I'm going to fit this one here it means enlarging the existing vent hole but I'll connect it to the new ducting and also tee off and join into the old ducting so that I have uh, an even distribution of hot air throughout the motorhome Now because I've got this to go through and the floor of the motorhome for the exhaust to go out to the outside I want to get the exact position of this so I'm going to shine a torch through this hole and it should give me the exact position down below. I fitted the heater mounting plate uh, to the floor temporarily and here I've positioned the exhaust to where the floor goes through to the underside of the motorhome. Now I've also made up a couple of these plates in order to sandwich between the body of the motorhome, protect the body from the heat and also centralise the, uh, the exhaust as it goes through. The exhaust, the air intake and the fuel pipe are just a matter of putting over these spigots and tightening up the Jubilee clips. One thing I have changed is that I've raised the unit up off the floor. I was a bit concerned about anything getting too hot on this vinyl floor. I'm outside now in the storage compartment where the air inlet pipe comes through. Um, I've already put the clips on, the Jubilee clips. You have a filter that's supplied with this kit. It's a straight through filter with a sponge inner, a porous sponge inner, so it lets the air through and you simply screw it on to the tube. In this case here, because it's in a nice dry spot, I'm going to position it um, comfortably over by the fuel tank. I've pre-assembled the fuel dosage pump so that it's a lot easier to connect together and I'm going to tuck it away in the corner down here and all the pipe works nicely run along the top and underneath So that's the work in the storage compartment finished. The fuel line comes down through the fuel filter where it's sucked up into the dosage pump and from the dosage pump runs along and into the bottom of the heater unit. The exhaust pipe runs from the bottom of the heater unit right through out to the bottom of the van and the air intake from the heater unit and is just tucked up 
inside there. Now I'm also adding a heat resistant insulation wrap all around the exhaust here for where it passes through the body uh, to protect it and stop any heat radiating to the body. This is a, a separate kit I bought. It comes with about five meters of two inch insulation uh, and half a dozen of these stainless steel clips to make sure it's properly on. I've also got a more heavy duty Jubilee clip for where it goes actually onto the spigot of the burner. And lastly then I fitted the silencer and the tailpipe. I've just got to put some brackets and clips on to secure it. This is the wiring loom that comes with the kit. It's got three individual pre-wired connectors on it and one goes to the burner unit, one to the dosage pump and one to the LED display. Now from the burn unit one to the LED display is about two meters so you have to bear this in mind whereabouts you're going to position that display. Um, in here my burner unit is down here I'm going to try and position it up here and it's it's within the two meters of the burner unit and I'm going to be trying to hide all the pipe work by running it down inside this column. The monitor has got a detachable mounting plate on the back and only has two screws in it. I've put an additional two in because I just thought it would be a bit more secure. I've used one of these drill and countersink bits and then you just clip the cable connector to the loom and in this case what I've done I've fed it down inside the column to lose all the cables. Then of course the mounting plate goes on and it, it'll kind of hide the cable where it comes into the bottom of the monitor. And all you do next is simply clip the, the monitor back into position and you're ready to go. The live and the earth come as separate cables but still connected to the loom and I've I've joined them to my feed via some straight through connectors the and added controller some wrap around there on the wall sort of the cable, cable running tie. down within it's, the wall. Um, it's tied I them up run them through and to I think the uh, I think it'll hold in place much better across to the burning unit the cables from the display I found the best way to keep them in place really was just to duct tape them rather than try and pin them I've just got to put the framework back now do the ducting and I think I can uh, fire it up. I'm all ready to test now. I've got five litres of fuel in the tank. The air ducts are all connected up and run back to the main burner. The permanently open duct is one of the first ones off the run. Uh, the wiring loom is tucked away and clipped. So now it's just a case of putting in the fuse and powering up the unit. With this five kilowatt heater, it needs a 15 amp fuse. So. so the display is powered up now. 
When it first comes on, you'll get a series of zeros here in the center showing what function is happening. To alter all the various functions, you have to press various buttons in sequence. Now, there's also separate icons all over the screen, and I'm not gonna show you all of them. I've got a separate video that details exactly how to alter functions uh, and how to get deeper into the programmer but I'm not going to do it on this video I'm purely going to show how to set the clock how to set the temperature and how to fire it up uh, the first thing you need to do is to prime the system only do this on a new system and a new install just to get the the diesel fuel right up to the burner unit and to do that you press OK and down at the same time the off will flash, then if you press up, the pump will kick in. You also get a little pump symbol down here in the bottom left. And to stop it, you just press down. So because I've got such a short run uh, of fuel line, the fuel is practically up to the burner already. To set the time, what you do is press the settings button here and the zero will flash and it will go one or two. It's a, a 24 hour clock, so it'll only be one or two there. Press OK. Then the next one flashes, let's say it's 13 something. Press OK. And the same for the minutes and the seconds and you press OK. Then it goes to the first timer, which it shows at the moment is off. If I um, if I wanted to put switch it on, I'd go to on or off, and then you set the time for that. Press it again, you go to the second timer, which obviously is off as well. And if you press it again, it will show you a screen with a padlock down the bottom. This is password protected and it allows you to get deeper into the settings which I'll show in another video and it returns to the time. Now next by pressing the OK button you'll get the air temperature but press it again and now you'll be able to alter the preset temperature that you want it to go up to. And If you press OK it goes back to the time. So now you've got uh, thermostatically controlled temperature via your settings. And now in order to turn the system on, all you need to do is press this sim this button here, it's the on off button. So I press that once, now it's showing on, it's showing the fan running and the fan drives the exhaust gas, which is shown here by this arrow, and the inlet air are running okay. Uh, there's also a red symbol here which is the glow plug so now what's it what it's doing it's going through a series of checks of pre-start checks to make sure that everything's okay to fire up the um, the heater and get it running up to temperature the camera is very close to the burner unit so you'll hear the changes in the fan as they happen now once it's done all its preliminary checks and it's got the air out and the fresh air in and the glow plug is up to temperature the fuel dosage pump cuts in and that's the clicking that you can hear the fan will start to increase now with the dosage pump fan and glow plug running it's pulling the most amount of ampage out of your battery depending on what size unit you've got a two or five eight kilowatt unit um, the amount of power used might vary slightly this is using about 10 amps now it only uses that at a maximum on startup and shutdown when that glow plug goes out it drops down to about an amp amp and a half so now the 
heater is fired up and the fan is starting to increase you can probably just hear it the pulse rate of the pump is increasing putting more fuel into the burner and now we've got we've got one bar of heat so that fan is really ramping up now we're up to two bars and now the glow plug has gone out the fuel is in effect self igniting fans at maximum maximum dosage and we're ramping up we've got one yellow and we're working to uh, up to a point of uh, six bars in here which shows we're at maximum temperature now our whole procedure from start up to maximum takes about on average five minutes at that point we're pushing out the maximum airflow so now we're up to maximum heat we're on maximum fan rate and what we're getting out of the burner unit is the full volume air and the full amount of heat that it can produce to shut the system down it's purely a case of pressing the off button and hold it for a second or two and then it will flash off the unit won't shut down immediately um, it has to go through a series of checks now you hear the fan has slowed down a little bit but again this will take a minute or two because it's it's trying to get all the exhaust gases out burn off all the excess fuel and push fresh air back into the burner chamber and in effect clean it out ready for a startup procedure now you also get a keyring type fob remote it's got a on and off button on it and a plus and minus which uh, raise and lower the temperature um, but before you can use it you've got to pair it with the with the controller and you've got a symbol here um, which is the wireless uh, strength between the two and the way to pair it is simply press the up button and hold it until HFA appears once that's on it's done simple as that it's now paired with the unit so if I want to turn it on now uh, with the remote uh, I press on and straight away it comes on and if I want to shut it down I just press off and it will show off and finally the burner winds down until it stops and shuts off and you're left just with the um, time in the display and now it's all ready just to be turned on again when you want to run it so the installation is complete now uh, I'm sitting here in the motor home it's lovely and toasty lovely and warm and the heater is just working a treat it hasn't missed a beat so far the whole uh, installation took me a, about a month working in the evenings and over the weekend and part time and really it's a, a straightforward job for any average DIYer with your average DIY tools. Uh, just take your time, think about where everything's going and do the job methodical and you'll get a good result. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, maybe you've got something out of it. Don't forget I've got other videos on other parts of uh, the system separately uh, and in detail. But for now then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.